Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to uh, another video. <clears throat> Trying to get some things going on with the youth. My uh, phone's being weird, but um, well, I'm just go ahead and go before it, it, it literally just like just just out on I don't know what's going on with it. But anyways, um, so we'll just try. <laughs> I gotta start over again. Um, I don't know how my I don't know how long. I don't know if it's going to do it again, but. We'll just go ahead and get started in any way. So uh, welcome back to a, another uh, youth sermon or youth service. Um, I did the last one two weeks ago, July 1st. It's July 15th. I'm doing it every two weeks now. And youth, I hope you're tuning in tonight. So um, I really don't want to like rush it. But I don't know if my phone's going to do that again. I don't want to have to do this like three or four times. But um, anyway, so let's go ahead. Let's just get started and just... The Lord take care of the rest. So, uh, I'm going to read a scripture, and uh, I'll just go ahead and pray, and you know we'll get into it. So, uh, in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen, it reads this: Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away; behold, behold, all things become new. So, dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and honor. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you just have your way. Help me to speak your word and, and speak to anyone who hears, Lord. Not just youth, but anyone, Lord God. Uh, their hearts can be open unto you, Lord, for you to speak to them. We thank you and give you honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, um, use that scripture, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 17, because uh, that scripture is... Basically, what I'm talking about tonight is change. And that's a big change. If anyone comes to Christ, he is a new creation. And so, uh, youth, I just want to talk about uh, just really that there needs to be a change. And I know uh, <laughs> um, nobody, <laughs> I was like this growing up. I didn't like change in my life. I wanted things to stay the same as it was. I didn't want to like change in movie. I didn't want to change in schools. I didn't want to change in friends. I didn't want. We talked about that last week, on um, you know, uh, that uh, friendships with others and friendship with God. And sometimes there has to be a change in your friends. You know, because you can have some bad friends or bad influences. But sometimes there needs to be change. And God likes change. God don't want things to stay the same and a lot of times we can have fear on that or not wanting to change things but change can bring a lot of good things and so um a lot of people don't like change but god sometimes wants change in our lives and so what basically what i want the kind of change i want to talk about tonight is basically in us you know we got a lot of change going on right now with the whole coronavirus and everything that's going on it's not how it used to be used to be basically we're entering we have entered into a new normal and so it's pretty crazy for me you know being 26 and and what i mean three four five i don't know what age you start you know but i guess i don't know just what 20 years of my life things have been what like the same and now everywhere you go you have to wear a mask now and it's things changing schools and places you go to that was shut down and who knows what's all going to happen again and so um but the change that i want to talk about is in us and there's changes that god wants to make in us and sometimes that can be our attitudes um if your attitude is ugly and displeasing and just rude you're acting, you're behaving just terrible. God wants to change that because God is love and he don't want us to be mean and rude. He don't want us to have bad attitudes. Uh, I talked about last week. Sometimes God wants us to have a change in friends because like I said, sometimes having bad influences can influence you and on who you are. And sometimes there needs to be a change in friends. Um... Uh, a change in our identity and that's what God wants to do and that's what I want to talk about tonight is having a change in our identity 
And if we can really see how God sees us, then that will really change a lot of things in us. And we'll start seeing on ourselves how God sees us, that we are loved, that he loves us. And once we get to know him more, we want to be more like him. And he'll change it. He'll change our attitudes. He'll change our acting. And he'll, he'll even help us to change our friends and the, how we talk, how we speak, how we think. And just like that scripture says, if anyone um, is in Christ, he is a new creation. And you will want to be that new creation, that new person. You will want to be like more like Jesus, a change in us. And so what could change do? Change. I mean, it promotes uh, personal growth. It's, uh, it's, it, it, does, it has improvements, life values, strength. Um, progress and new opportunities with change comes with a lot of these things and that would change a lot of things like um, how you used to not pick up behind yourself or used to not help your parents uh, do stuff but once you start to um, come to know Christ and start praying and you will start that he would do this change in you and it's only through Jesus where you would get that true change and I mean some of you some people are just like they're wanting change in their lives but they don't know how to do it you know the apostle Paul talked about I do the things I don't want to do and the things I want to do I don't do and he says at the end I think God through Jesus Christ that uh, that has helped him and it's only through Christ where we can get these these changes if we want personal growth if we want improvement in our lives if we want a uh, change in life values if we want new strength new uh, progress and new opportunities then it is only through Jesus Christ where he can bring this change in us you start to see yourself talking better to your parents, and you start to see yourself ha uh, having more respect for authority. You start to uh, see yourself not thinking these things that you don't want to think about. And in any kind of depression, in any kind of uh, suicidal thoughts, any kind of things that, that may come into uh, your, um, just you don't like, it is only through Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus Christ who can bring uh, this change into um, your life. If anything that's just you don't want, <laughs> um, Jesus can do it. Because he's the one that created us. He's the one that knows us. He's the one that can change anything in our lives. And so, I mean, if you know Jesus and you have a relationship with him, um, and you're still and you're struggling with some things. I mean, just 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 trust. Just go to him, and just trust in him, and he will help you with that change. I need change in my own life personally. Um, that's things that I struggle with. You know, nobody's perfect, but we strive to try to to, to be better. And um, and I want that. I need that in my life. So. And it's only through Jesus who can give that true change. And so, because in John 10.10, 10, it says this. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that is the end. That's the devil. He wants that. Give me one second. Uh, sorry about that. And so, but Jesus says, I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. And we can have that abundant life. I want and need more of that abundant life myself, you know. Um, but coming to Jesus and following Jesus we can have all this stuff. We can have that abundant life. We'll find that true peace and true joy just relies in Jesus. And just trusting in Him. And He'll bring that peace, that perfect peace. You know, the Bible talks about um, uh, 
I don't remember what uh, scripture, but it, it talks about, uh, I think it's Philippians. It talks about, um, I'm going to go to it. I'm going to find it. So I believe it's in Philippians. Ah, Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, folks, when we pray on something, and I've struggled with this, and sometimes I still do, is when we pray on something, we want the answer right then and there, right now. We want that change right then, right there, right now. But sometimes change takes a process. Sometimes God's got to teach you some things. Sometimes God's got to work some things out of you. Um, but when we pray, we just need to like, just just pray and trust God. And don't pick it back up and worry about it. And he says the peace of God will guard your hearts. Uh, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We all need that. I need that. Uh, and I want that. And so, but in John 10, 10, it talks about that Jesus can give that life more and more abundantly. But it's truly following him. And I just want to read a quote. And I'm about to close on up here. It says this. So we talk about change. This is, uh, this is by Leo Tolstoy. Everybody thinks of changing humanity and nobody thinks of changing himself. It's that normal saying, you know, we want to see change in the world. First, it's got to be a change in us. And most importantly, we want people to see Jesus. And Jesus, Jesus flipped, <laughs> Jesus, uh, he, Jesus flipped the world upside down. Uh, there was another scripture in the Bible that talks about where these apostles, the disciples, they flipped the world upside down. And because they were following Jesus. And so, if God is love, we want people to see love there's a lot going on in this world going on with protests and all kinds of stuff but you know what if we let people see jesus and we share jesus with them there's start to be a change but first it starts with us because in matthew chapter 16 i'm about to close on up and uh i'm gonna read it i'm gonna read it from here it's on here in matthew chapter 16 uh verse 24 through 25 jesus said if any of you wants to be my follower you must turn from your selfish ways and take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. That's a lot of things that's hard. And, and I know uh, for me being youth, it's a lot of things um, don't want to give up. And even still uh, today, you know, what the struggles that we all go through. It's a lot of things ourselves. We just like, we don't want to change that part of ourselves. But Jesus can bring these changes if we just give it up and follow him. And like Pastor talks about, you know, you want to see these things come off, just follow him. And as you go on, as you keep trucking on, you just see these things just start falling off. And you start to see yourself, uh, um, for some reason, just start loving more. And be more respectful, and just, just you just start to see your attitude, and start to change, and everything. And so, um, and that's what Second Corinthians five seventeen talks about. If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And then there's newness in Christ. You start to just feel different you see things different and you just start loving and it's it's not you it's, it's just jesus working in you and you start to see and you're just like wow this is <laughs> this is amazing uh, but um uh, again like normal uh like last about two weeks ago uh I just shared a prayer on there. I mean, if you don't know Jesus, and if you want that change in your life, if you just if you're just going through all kinds of just just mess and just like all kinds of stuff, um, Jesus can can he can he can change your life. I'm not saying that everything's gonna be taken away right then and there from you, but you'd be amazed at what God can do in your life. But if you're struggling with some things, and if you want change in your life, Jesus can bring that change, and um, 
So I just want to share a prayer with you. And if you don't know Jesus, you can pray this after me. You can accept Christ and you'll be amazed at what he can do um, in, in your life. He'll help you. I mean, there's, I'm not saying um, everything is going. What I'm trying to say is is he'll be, with, be, be there with you in the, the struggles. It's still going to be times and tough times and problems and stuff like that. But what an amazing we have a friend in Jesus who can stand right there in us in the midst of our troubles and to help us and be there for us. You know, we can't rely on humans and people. We need to rely on the one that created humans and created people. And he'll be there to help us in our times and needs and rely on him. So I just want to pray. If you don't know Jesus, you can pray this after me. So dear, I just pray that... Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I need change in my life. I just ask that you come into my heart and I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again. I set you into my life and make you my Lord and my Savior. Help me to be a new creation. Help me to follow you. I believe that you died and rose again. I pray this in Jesus' name. And folks, if anyone, I, I believe if you pray to that you are truly, by faith, you accepted that Jesus died on the cross. He, he, he died and he rose again. And if you accept him as your savior, then you are a new creation in Christ. And so that's the most amazing thing. It's just accepting Christ in your life and to follow him. Because in the end, we'll be with, we'll be with Christ. And, and, you know, we'll see each other again as brothers and sisters in the Lord. So um, I love y'all. Uh, God bless y'all. I know things are getting pretty hectic with... Um, the whole virus, coronavirus thing again, but you know what, like I said, um, you know, we're not exempt from, you know, troubles and times on this world, but we have Christ in here, uh, in us to give us peace and give us comfort in, in these times. So I love y'all and y'all be blessed in Jesus name. I just say a quick prayer. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, uh, for your love and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for this word, Lord. Thank you for the people who watched, Lord. And Father, I pray that it just touched someone, it touched someone's heart. And I just pray, Lord, that um, the seeds that was planted, Lord, that you will water it, that you will give the increase, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord. Just thank you, Lord, for you and just for your free gift of salvation. We pray this and give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name.